public comments. First is Mary White. Good evening. Good evening. My name is Mary, uh, Minister Mary E. White. I live at 112 Third Avenue right here in Joliet, Illinois. Uh, to the mayor, city council members, city officials, and the citizens of Joliet. I stand before you a Christian who attends Good Samaritan Ministries of Joliet under uh, where the Reverend Dr. Lester Brown is pastor, where I serve as an ordained associate minister. Um, I stand before you as the uh, co-founder and president of Paraclete Ministries. Um, and I've been here before as the mayor have uh, signed uh, two proclamations for the longest night and other events here in the city and everything. Uh, I participate on Boots on the Ground where we go out physically uh, to every part of Joliet, Illinois and pray for the residents, build relationships, provide uh, resources for the people who we beat to try to uh, assist and um, and help them. Uh, I team up with Guard in the City Prayer with Prophet Zora <coughs> Holloway when we're down at the, uh, the courthouse praying for our city uh, and its officials. I'm a member of the NAACP. I serve on the East Side Neighborhood Council with uh, President Betty Satcher. I have worked at the IYC Joliet, which was the maximum security prison for juvenile male offenders. Uh, having one-on-one -on -one and group contact with them as a mental health professional. Uh, I am a neighbor to, um, to the, uh, one of the male offenders in the incident that happened, I believe, on the 14th of this month. Um, and I am an African-American adult female, uh, as is my great niece, who is one of the alleged offenders in this same incident that has necessitated my presence uh, here this evening. During our East Side Neighborhood meeting on uh, July 9th, the question was raised if the Joliet Police Department has engaged in any processes of self-evaluation specifically regarding their relationship with the citizens on the East Side of Joliet as well as Joliet as a whole. This question was based on remarks uh, that have been said over and over again that usually it's the parents' fault, uh, it is the alleged perpetrator's fault, it is the community is at fault for these things that happen in our community, uh, for these unfortunate situations that happen on the east side and in our city. And uh, where, as I do understand that we all have to take responsibility for our actions, for our behaviors and the decisions that we make in any given circumstance and situation. And uh, our response was, you know, uh, a lot of people don't like the police in Joliet. And then another response was, uh, there is one in every profession. My concern here is, uh, possible police brutality, abuse of authority, and failure to gain and maintain trust with the people of color here in Joliet, Illinois. We live in a city of excitement because we are a city of hope, justice, and peace for all people where police brutality, abuse of authority, and failure to gain and maintain trust with people of color and all people must not be tolerated at any level. My prayer for our city is still that the Spirit of God be poured out on our city and our city leaders for victory over these mindsets, attitudes, and behaviors so we can quietly go about our business of living simply and in peace, in <laughs> humble contemplation, not worrying about the integrity of our city or our city leaders. I am still thanking God for his continued protection and his power, thanking him for canceling out every assignment that has come against our city and our city leaders. In Jesus' name, thank you. Thank you. Uh, if I can remind the speakers, I should have said to you, Mary, we have the ordinance that cuts off at four minutes, so if you could try to keep your comments to four minutes. Thank you. 
<coughs> is there anyone else who would like to speak under public comments this evening? <coughs> And just a reminder, if anyone has anything writ written, if four minutes isn't enough, okay. Okay, well, thank you. Good evening. Good evening. My name is Milton Bass. <clears throat> I would like to piggyback on what she's just got done speaking on. I'm a citizen. I've been here living in Illinois, Joliet, for about f f maybe 50 years plus. Retired last year, thank you for that. We all victims. I think y'all heard this story before. This is not new, really. I mean, this is nothing new here. I, I, I thank you for speaking on that because it was just Friday night. My two grandson got beat down, beat, beat to a spasm and tased by police in, on the east side. This can't, be, this, this can't be no new story. So so I think that we should see some results. She was beaten right in front of my, uh, right in front of my mom. She haven't eaten. I mean, she have nightmares. My, my, grand, my grandson is only 20 years old. Birthday, working. They tased him, they beat him, broke, it, broke his hand. I think this, we need actions. We need some action. I mean, we, it's tired of talking. It's, we don't see no results. We don't see any results. I'm gonna keep it for four minutes. I'm not reading from nothing, I'm, I'm, I'm coming from my heart. What happened Friday night, it was horrible. If they were jumped and jumped and gained by others, the police been look, look, the police been, went out looking for them and they would have prosecuted them. So who's gonna prosecute the police? They were doing nothing. They were beaten all in front of our witness at his home. So I, that's all I gotta say. I'm disappointed, <clears throat> I'm hurt, I'm choked up. When you see your loved one get beat down and you can't do nothing about it because they do it because they got a badge and a gun and they smirking, it's ridiculous. I'm upset. I'm upset with the police. I'm upset with everybody on that on the panel because this is not no new story. This is this is old school. It's been happening. They targeted the east side, and I think everyone on this panel know this. So I'm hoping and praying that not just for my kids, my grandkids. I'm hoping I'm praying for the whole community. Something should be done about it. It should have been done a long time ago. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else who would like to speak? Hello, everybody. My name is Ernest Krim. I'm an educator at Julia Central. I'm going into my seventh year as an educator. Um, I've done a lot of programs at Julia Central, um, ranging from community events to brother to brother, male mentoring group, to more recently, the Black Student Union organization that we have. Um, our organization center on allowing our students to be exposed to different experiences, celebrating their culture, and also uh, allowing them and letting them know what they can possibly encounter in America. As, being, as black individuals. Um, with that said, most of that, or none of it even matters if they come across somebody who's having a bad day and is racially profiling them. You can listen to every motivational speech in the world. You can uh, do whatever you want, go to church every day, but if somebody's having a bad day and they don't like you and they stereotype you, then it's it. Um, I speak today on the four year anniversary of Eric Garner. Eric Garner was a black man in New York who was minding his business and he was stopped by an officer for allegedly selling loose cigarettes, which would be a misdemeanor. He was put in a chokehold and he was choked to death on camera. The officer still has a job, but the person who recorded the incident is in jail right now. That's the context of this whole situation. Um, I was led to believe, and I thought for a while that Joliet was a tad bit different, but over the past month or so, I was exposed to different things that changed my opinion. The first being um, that there was a, well, there's a, a, a pending court case from an officer named Lionel Allen. And all of this, of course, is alleged because it's a court case, so I can't speak factually, right? But Lionel Allen is alleging that he was moved because of his race to a different position. And he's saying that somebody was given that position because they were white. And he stated that the person is not like black people and that they laughed when a, a 10 year old and 11 year old black child was maced and he mocked it and he joked about it. The first question I really have is why is there ever a reason to mace a 10 year old child or 11 year old child if you're a grown man or woman? Why is that an issue? Um, the second thing I have, a, an issue I have with that is he states allegedly that he was uh, going to be terminated um, if he had not dropped the lawsuit. 
Looking at a recent article, there were 18 different infractions by various officers, um, some outrageous, some seemed like they were trivial, but a lot of these officers, when they engaged in practices that were very unbecoming of the city, they were given a slap on the wrist, a verbal reprimand, or maybe one or two days suspension. But him um, reporting racist bullying, he could have lost his job. I don't understand why that happened, allegedly. Um, also, more recently, as the two previous speakers spoke about, there was an incident that happened over the weekend that I've been reading about. Now, again, I don't know all the facts. Um, the first thing, I've never even seen the video, so I don't know what happened. I just know there are two different sides. It was said that the, the, the person in the car who was driving ran a stop sign. The officer pulled them over. Um, the issue I have then at that point is when he pulled the person over, he never stated to the person why he was being stopped. And the person in the car continued to ask, why am I being stopped? What's the problem? The officer never stated why. Let's assume that he did run a stop sign. That's a ticket, he should have gotten it. I don't understand why it was escalated to the point of him uh, being yanked out the car after the window was smashed. I understand, he didn't give his ID. He should have done that. But why couldn't the officer practicing whatever the escalation process they were taught go back and write a ticket based on the license plate? Now, again, I'm not an officer. I know it's a rough and I know it's a tough job. But over running a stop sign, why do you want to come, become combative? Why is that the first thing you want to do with us? Why do you want to beat us to the ground to prove a point? I don't understand that. And living in this city and living in America, whenever a cop is behind me, I do not feel safe, no matter how many degrees I have, no matter where I live in this country. And I think that's the issue, and I think every black person in this country, in this city, can relate to that, whether they want to admit it or not. Get the four minute mark, can you wrap it up, please? I definitely can. Thank you. Um, I would just ask, and I wonder um, if we can see dash cam footage. I wonder what the de-escalation process is for the officers. How are they trained? Do they go into these communities and get to know the people? Um, are there programs in place to reach out to different groups of people, black and Hispanic, to be on this police force? Um, what's, what are the demographics overall, and what is Joliet going to do moving forward? Because there's an election coming up, and I think we as citizens deserve to have some answers. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else that would like to speak this evening? My name is Reverend DeAndre Robinson. I'm the youth pastor of the Second Baptist Church. Um, believe you me, I won't be four minutes. I think they've said enough uh, in regards to this, but my daughter uh, was a part of the incident that happened to happen on Friday the 13th. I just think that it could have been de-escalated in some way if they would have had to call their superior to come and help. Why did it have to, after the smashing of the window, yanking and throwing down and all of those type things. I just think, like he said, um, degrees don't mean anything. I have a bachelor's degree in criminal justice. I'm a youth pastor trying to help kids to better themselves, trying to teach them the right way to respond to police. But when the young man asks, why, uh, why did you pull me over? We still don't have an answer to this day until it reached the newspaper. We don't know if he would have given them that answer. Maybe they would have complied but our city police are getting paid by the tax dollars to do their job. So we just ask to help us to help our young people and let's not beat them like they're animals. Everybody is human, so we wanna treat them in such a way as that. Um, there's many times I've helped our young people to de-escalate a situation and helping the police. And I think if the police are paid, maybe they should be trained to do such as that. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else who would like to speak? My name is Oscar. Uh, I'm a resident of Joliet. Um, I'm also uh, part of the Eastside uh, College Street Neighborhood Council. Um, to wrap it up, too, uh, I've had a lot of good experiences with JPD. I know it's a hard job uh, for the most part, and I, I know that they are very community oriented. I've also had bad experiences. Uh, they were taken care of. Uh, but I've talked to friends also that have had bad experiences. And I think it's very important that, like someone else mentioned in the audience, that there is evaluations with the community because we are pushing the community. Uh, you're pushing the whole community aspect of the police department, you know, if you see it on the squad cars and everything. But it seems like when I've talked to friends of mine, it's like they don't trust the police sometimes, even though I do. Um, also, uh, 
maybe something to look into is how complaints are handled into officers. And a whole another kind of aspect of um, a whole another issue is uh, how officers deal with mental health issues. I noticed that I've had to make calls in regards to that. And some officers are very well knowledgeable in it. And some officers are just not, uh, they don't have knowledge into like how to petition someone into the hospital, uh, how some situations work. I know recently there was an article that there was a man that was suicidal in his home and he was given a ticket for disorderly conduct. I personally think that was not necessary. Uh, you know, just things like that. I think maybe it's just part of a training, maybe adding on to trains that are already there. Uh, but I mean, you know, I think you guys are doing a phenomenal job. Just think that this should be looked into further. That's it, thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else who would like to speak this evening? My name is Linda Pruitt. Um, I went to the hospital the other day because um, I found out that I had high blood pressure. And so when I found out that I had high blood pressure, I really didn't want to, thank you, I really didn't want to take the pills because due to the fact that I only have one kidney and the doctor told me that um, the medication filters through your kidney, so I really didn't want to take the pills. And so the doctor came in and he gave me like a stress test and stuff like that. And then he goes, I was, I'm always doting on my grandkids. I love my grandkids like they were my own grandkids. And so he told me, he said, Linda, I hear you speaking about your grandkids a lot. He said, you love your grandkids a lot. I said, yes, I do love my grandkids. And I want to see them be able to see them grow up. So he said, look me in your, look me in your, in my eyes. And I looked him in the eye and he said, do you want to see your grandkids grow up? He said, well, you have to take these pills then. I said, okay, so I'm going to take these pills. I want to see my kids grow up. I want to see my grandkids grow up. There are good polices and there are bad polices, just like there are good people and there are good bad, bad polices. We just got to filter out the good ones and the ones that are doing wrong things, they need to do, get some more training or something. That's what I want to say, because I want to see my grandkids grow up and so on. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else? <coughs> Seeing none, next is Mayor and Council comments. Before we do, Chief, there are, I know there are a number of questions to answer. Is there any comment you want to make tonight? I know there's, I believe there's an investigation pending right now. Uh, yes, Mayor. And, and I can appreciate the concern that the family members have here over this traffic stop that occurred this weekend. We have initiated an investigation into, we have an ongoing through our internal affairs division. There are also criminal charges pending, otherwise I would elaborate more on it. But I will say that there is dash cam video, there is body uh, audio from the body recording. And so I would ask the public not to take the snippet of telephone video that was broadcast throughout the media and jump to conclusions based on that limited information. And once we've completed the investigation and, and the criminal process is completed, I will be more than happy to share that information with you. Thank you. 